This is Mac OS Ken. One more, one more thing. Get ready to get fit. An OS update coming very soon. It's Wednesday, the 9th of December, 2020. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Squarespace, your place online. If not knowing how to build a website is keeping you from building a website, great news. Building a powerful site is easy with Squarespace. If you just want a pretty page, their drag and drop editing tools can make that a snap. If you want to sell things, though, they can help. From search engine optimization tools to help people find the stuff you're trying to sell, to help with shipping and taxes and things you might not have thought about. Squarespace isn't just about the site. It's about the support. Find out for yourself what Squarespace can do for you with a two-week free trial. I had the bones of my first site up in a few hours. Squarespace makes it so easy that for most people, two weeks is more than enough time to build the site you want to build. Go to squarespace.com slash macOSCan for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code macOSCan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code MACOSCAN to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain at squarespace.com slash MACOSCAN. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's show. New hardware rumors ended up being true. Just about every site out there, including Ars Technica, had a write-up of AirPods Studio, which, it turns out, are called AirPods Max. Those would be the fancy schmancy over-the-air headphones that have been rumored for a good bit of this year. Ars says the electric earmuffs take design cues from existing Apple products and use several internal sensors and microphones to deliver computational audio features. Science! What kind of sensors? The piece says each set includes an optical sensor, a position sensor, a case detect sensor, an accelerometer in each ear cup, and a gyroscope in just the left ear cup. There are also nine microphones. One is devoted exclusively to voice pickup, while the other eight are used for active noise cancellation. I am retro enough to think that mics for headphones are paradoxical. Headphones produce sound. They don't listen for it. I'm so retro. The microphones in the headphones help with things like transparency mode, which, with the tap of a thing, lets you hear the world around you while the audio you're using to block out the world around you plays on. Ars Technica says the built-in sensors can also be used to detect when and how the headphones are being worn, driving some convenience features like automatically pausing music playback when you lift one of the ear cups. The sensors also facilitate spatial audio and adaptive EQ, according to the report. I mentioned a case detect sensor a moment ago. The smart case, as Apple calls it, protects the cans like a good case should. It'll also drop them into a low-power sleep mode, according to Ars Technica, and it'll act as a pass-through, letting users charge AirPods Max through the case's lightning port and the lightning-to-USB-C cable which is included. Apple's battery acumen is once again at play. Apple says the AirPods Max battery will run for up to 20 hours with spatial audio and active noise cancellation turned on. The company also says that charging for five minutes will give users an hour and a half of playback. Design-wise, everything about these things screams Apple, except the logo. There isn't one. Controls are very Apple, one button and the digital crown. That looks a lot like the digital crown on Apple Watch, but bigger. Ours says the crown can be used to adjust volume, skip forward or backward, answer incoming calls, or invoke Apple's personal digital assistant. 
They come in a muted range of five colors, space gray, silver, green, sky blue, and pink. Orders went live Tuesday morning for delivery on the 15th of December. If you ordered them Tuesday morning, first you had to get over the price. AirPods Max will run buyers $549. Now, I was tempted to say will run buyers, of which there were many, but I stopped myself. We don't know how many buyers there have been so far. What we do know is that Apple seems to have run out of the first round of devices. Apple Insider ran a piece early Tuesday afternoon saying that shipping times for AirPods Max had already slipped into 2021. A couple of hours later, they appeared to have run headlong into 2021. Checking Tuesday afternoon, the Space Gray were shipping 31st of December through the 8th of January. Same for the Silver, while Green, Sky Blue, and Pink each showed delivery waits of 12 to 14 weeks. That's the way it was around 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. By 5 p.m. Eastern, Space Gray had also gone to 12 to 14 weeks. By 9 p.m. Eastern, all five colors were showing shipping times of 12 to 14 weeks. Impossible at this point to know whether that means demand is off the charts or Apple was conservative in its production. Of course, if Apple was conservative in its production, demand is off the charts. Just not necessarily in the way we usually mean that phrase. Now here is something weird. Adding engraving brings AirPods Max back to the new year. On a lark, I decided to see how much time adding the free engraving would add to the weight. As of this writing, adding engraving yielded delivery windows of space gray 30th of December through the 7th of January, silver 30th of December through the 7th of January, green 8 to 10 weeks, sky blue 10 to 12 weeks, pink 7th of January through the 14th of January. I feel kind of silly telling you all of that. Fast as things are changing with these things, those windows are probably completely different by the time this gets to you. While Apple's battery and design games are on point, so too is their marketing might. The company hit with a minute and a half video called Journey into Sound on Tuesday. Basically, it shows somebody lost in sound in a floating in space kind of way using transparency mode to come back to Earth momentarily, then getting lost again in sound. I say their marketing mind is on point because I didn't want a pair of these things until I saw that video. You can see it for yourself on YouTube. Watch at your own risk. Speaking of risk, what's it going to cost to replace the battery on these things? A piece from Mac Rumors says Apple has posted that cost to its AirPods service and repair page. Out of warranty, the piece says battery replacement will run buyers $79. Days to months before people are able to hide out under AirPods Max, they can get their Cupertino-powered workout on. Engadget ran a piece Tuesday saying that Apple's on-demand workout service Fitness Plus will launch next Monday, the 14th of December. Announced back in September at the Time Flies event, Engadget says workout types will include cycling, yoga, treadmill runs, rowing, dance, and others, with new classes made available each week. Sounds boring. Gets interesting with Apple Watch. According to the report, starting a video from an iOS device or Apple TV kicks off the corresponding workout on the watch, and metrics like heart rate and calories are beamed from the wearable to the screen. Apple says the service can also suggest workouts that dovetail with or diverge from a user's exercise history. And beyond all that, a so-called burn bar offers more competitive users a glimpse at how their performance in a workout measures up to others who have completed it in the past. After any free trials, Fitness Plus will run runners and rowers and other active people $10 a month or $80 if you want to commit to a year and grab a discount. It's also included with the $30 per month Apple One Premier Bundle if you live someplace where you can get that. 
launching next week in Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, the UK, and the US. In terms of hardware, the Apple Watch integration requires an Apple Watch Series 3 or later, an iPhone 6S or later, or an iPhone SE, and Apple TV HD or Apple TV 4K, or if you're using an iPad as a display, you'll need an iPad Pro, iPad 5th generation or later, iPad mini 4 or later, iPad Air 2, or iPad Air 3rd generation or later. As for software, you'll need to be running watchOS 7.2 and iPhone 14.3, so guess what we're getting by next Monday? If you're not the kind to keep up with what version of a given OS your kit is running, you are not running iOS 14.3 or watchOS 7.2 at this point, unless you're a developer, in which case you might be. Apple Insider says Apple issued release candidate betas of those operating systems to developers Tuesday, along with release candidates of iPadOS 14.3 and TVOS 14.3. Changes listed in the piece include support for Apple Pro Raw, an updated pairing interface for Find My, a change for how smart devices are managed in HomeKit, the addition of cardio fitness categories in the Health app, shortcut wallpaper changes, and updates to default search options, among other changes listed. What's funny is that piece seems to have missed the Fitness Plus compatibility, though maybe that won't show up in those operating systems. Rather, those OSs may be required for the full Fitness Plus experience. Anyway, those operating systems should be out to everybody by next Monday. Probably sooner. One more bit of news tied to Apple hardware and services. The piece from iMore says family setup for Apple Watch is finally making its way to Canada. Also announced at September's Time Flies event iMore says family setup for Apple Watch allows family members who do not have an iPhone, commonly children or those who are older, to stay connected. Those who are set up using a cellular Apple Watch and the feature can make and receive calls, send messages, and alert their family members of an emergency. Only one carrier for Canada now, Bell Mobility issued a press release Tuesday saying it was pleased to partner with Apple to be the first in Canada to offer family setup. More news in a moment, but first a word from Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home. When you're talking about keeping you and your home safe, we could be talking about lots of things. Break-ins, fires, flooding, medical emergencies. If any or all of those are a concern for you, Simply Safe has your back. Their home security systems deliver award winning 24 7 protection, not just with cameras and sensors, but with professional monitors ready to send police, fire, or EMTs the moment they're needed. Getting and setting it up is a breeze. You can either take their suggested packages or order individual components to build the system that's right for you with no pushy salespeople, no long-term contract, and no installation crew. It took me about half an hour to get my sensors and keypad in place. Super simple. If you've been considering it, now's an excellent time to try because right now my listeners get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com/macoscan. You also get a 60-day free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit S-I-M-P-L-I, simplysafe.com slash macOSCan for your free security camera today. That's simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. And thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's show. Apple wants a court in Australia to toss the lawsuit brought against it there by Epic Games. I know what you're thinking. Of course it does. But this isn't just the company wishing. Apple Insider says the Cupertino crew wants a Fortnite court case in Australia thrown out because Epic Games had promised to settle disputes exclusively in the U.S. 
are you saying that Apple is saying that Epic said it would do one thing, then did something else? What are the odds? Epic filed suit against Apple in November in Australia, accusing Apple of using its alleged App Store monopoly to breach antitrust regulations there. In a hearing yesterday, the first in the proceedings, Apple Insider says Apple argued that Epic Games had contractually promised to settle any disputes or litigation with the Cupertino tech giant in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. As such, it asked for the case to be tossed out. Epic countered, saying the Australian case concerned great competition harm involving specific breaches of Australia law. If I were feeling snide, I would say, plus, you know, Epic and contractual agreements. Thank goodness I'm not feeling snide today. No word in the piece on when the court will rule on Apple's request. Well, here's an interesting turn. Apple's senior VP of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning, John Giannandria, is now heading up the Apple Car Project. So says a report from Bloomberg, highlighted by Mac Rumors. Hard to know how hands-on he'll be. The piece says he's still overseeing Siri development and Apple's work on machine learning. Still, the car work drives right up his alley. Back in 2017, says Mac Rumors, Apple CEO Tim Cook confirmed that Apple is working on autonomous driving software. We're focusing on autonomous systems. It's a core technology that we view as very important. We sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. It's probably one of the most difficult AI projects actually to work on, Cook said. Say it that way and the top AI guy seems like a notch and I will say, I look forward to hitching a lift with our robot overlords. News of an interesting biopic that may find its way to Apple TV+. Plus. Variety says Tara Mealy has signed on to write and direct an adaptation of the memoir of comedy legend Carol Burnett. According to the report, the movie was announced as a development title at Focus Features in 2019, though insiders said the project is in negotiations to jump to Apple, where it will be released as an original. I love Carol Burnett, and I am excited to see this film no matter where it ends up. That said, we can leave off the rest here until we know whether it'll actually be an Apple original. And finally today, from something Apple TV Plus may get, to something it can't seem to get enough of. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Tuesday announcing an early Season 3 renewal for the Ronald D. Moore alternate history series For All Mankind. Early, because Season 2 hasn't even started yet, let alone wrapped. The second season starts in the middle of February. If you haven't caught it, the press release outlines the series, saying For All Mankind explores what would have happened if the global space race had never ended. The series presents an aspirational world where NASA astronauts, engineers, and their families find themselves in the center of extraordinary events seen through the prism of an alternate history timeline, a world in which the USSR beats the U.S. to the moon. It then goes on to talk about Season 2, saying nothing about Season 3 except there's going to be one. So, I guess don't worry about having characters and storylines killed prematurely once season two is done. Coming up in a few minutes, Mac Voices host Chuck Joyner and I continue a conversation we started six years ago. A look at Apple services in a few minutes, available wherever you get podcasts or on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ken Ray. Yesterday on Mac OS Ken Live, I did a recap of the AirPods Max announcement. Then we talked over whether they're too expensive. Spoiler. They are, and they're not. Catch the replay on my YouTube channel to find out what I mean, or grab the audio podcast, Mac OS Ken Live, wherever you get podcasts. Don't forget, you can be part of the fun. Mac OS Can Live, recorded live before a socially distanced audience 
at 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, youtube.com slash Ken Ray. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Squarespace. Get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with offer code macOSCAN at squarespace.com slash macOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash macOSCAN. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.